Hi, welcome to a mystery teardown. Can you guess what this is? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to open it up and let you figure it out for yourself. I've covered up the uh, brand name here because you might recognize it. We've got a line on and off status start stop. It's obviously in a 19 inch rack mount. There's some sort of channel label thing over there. And if we have a look on the back here, this is what we've got. Just got a card edge connector here, some weird ass input and output system I.O. connectors, a remote start made in the United States of America, and an IEC input. <laughs> got any ideas? Now the interesting thing about this is though it's from a massive name which you can find almost any information on any product they've ever made, but my Google Foo must be off because I can't find a single thing about this. No user manual, no specs, no schematic, no service manual, nothing. Zip. Nada. Which of course makes it all the more interesting. So, let's go. Yes, this is my new uh, electric speedy screwdriver. Here we go. Let's take a look inside. Your guess is as good as mine. Whoa. Okay, we've got some... Is that 7.4 series stuff? No, it's not. Well, it could very well be. But they're custom part numbers and... You might recognise the logo. HP. None of this Agilent rubbish and certainly none of this Keysight rubbish. Um, we've got a bit of HP kit. Can you still figure out what this is. Um, we've got a mysterious metal can down here with our card edge connector. Oh, some gorgeous looking Sprague capacitors for all you Sprague fanboys. 2600 mic, none of that like 2200 E12 type rubbish. Um, we've got, looks like some power trannies down here on uh, the standoffs and maybe some, you know, zeners and diodes and and as is common in HP gear, you'll find the custom part numbers. Now, these could very well be uh, like, you know, standard 74 or 4000 series CMOS chips, but they've all got the HP part numbers on them. Very, very common. We've got a couple of relays, got a mains tranny over there, and, you know, some pretty how you doing wiring down in there as well. Check that out. Jeez, that's kind of like un HP, isn't it? It's almost as if it's like it's, you know, not like a mainstream product. So they've got what looks like a uh, TO3 package down in there. Probably like a series uh, pass transistor for a uh, linear regulator. And another switching rubbish in something like this. You still got any idea what it is? Bueller? Bueller? I do believe under here we'll have some sort of adjustment. Something, ah, oh, come on. Yeah, no. What? Some sort of like wool, like, um, it's not foam, it's not like closed cell foam, it's more like some sort of woolen stuff. Weird. I expected to find a trimmer pot under there. <laughs> the plot thickens. In fact, check this out. The entire thing, look, is mounted on this rubber, sort of, it's, it's almost sticky, kind of, sort of foamy rubber backing on that, so... So that's really strange. Let's take a squeeze inside. Okay, let's actually, let's lift. Oh, does that need? No, nah, there might be, might be something on the bottom. I think I've got to get the, might have to get the whole board out first. And uh, I don't know, that's, oh, what's going on? That's for all you Japanese relay fanboys, Babcock. Let's have a look what's under this board here. Uh, more stuff. Oh, <laughs> Motorola crystal oscillator. Ah, oh, oh, upside down, so all the electrons are going to fall out. Look at that. We got some uh, uh, potted uh, little custom transformers there with like you know half a dozen turns on each side. So wow. Anyway, it's running at massive 8.38 megahertz. Fantastic. But once again, got all the HP part numbers. You can go look those up, but, you know, there's, there's Signetics, stuff like that. Do we even have a date code yet? I don't know. Oh, look at the burn marks around that diode bridge there. 
Um, it's got a bit warm ski, and these little jumper pins here in the little machine pin socket. That's pretty how you're doing. Um, this is very unlike HP. It's almost as if it's not a mainstream product. And that's probably why I couldn't find any information on this thing at all. Oh, oh, look. It's a little... Oh, that, that must be a channel thing. I reckon that's a channel selector. And it smelt like mid-70s to me. And sure enough, 47th week, 73. And uh, 23rd week, 73. What have we got? 27th week, 74. So, yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's mid-70s. The smell is bang on. So do you have any clue what this thing does yet? Well, actually, I was wrong about the channel select up here. It's not channel select. If we actually go have a look inside here, ta-da, this might give you a clue. RDGS per second, readings per second. We're currently on four readings per second. Can you guess what it is now? Bueller. And I just love the hand taped layout on this. It's just classic. Look at that. Somebody's gone along there with the bishop tape and <laughs> laid out that double sided board. Brilliant. Oh, I found one that doesn't have a HP part number on it 7404. <laughs> Hex inverter, 7410 is it? Um, oh, sorry, 7410, but everything else has HP part numbers on it. So I'd actually say that's your address select down there. There you go, 1248, just uh, select your address in binary. Does anyone remember Stevens Arnold Inc. in South Boston, Massachusetts? <laughs> they were the go-to in the mid-70s for isolation transformers by the looks of it. Wow, look at the burn marks from that bridge rectifier. <laughs> anyway, all the magic's under here. Have you figured out what it is yet, by the way? And I love the uh, PCB threaded screw eyelets in there for the uh, power trannies. That's just fantastic. Uh, don't see enough of that these days. Oh no, I don't think they go all the way through. No, the screws were holding them in. We just have to get a bit medieval on its ass. And, uh, lift, hey, oh, look, oh, it's dead, wrapped in plastic. <laughs> you ever seen anything like that? Wow, with this, like, look, they're, they're, like, that's like thermal insulation. Look at that, just like your woolen, uh, you know, your pink bats, your woolen bats that you get in your house roof. <laughs> Terrific. They want, really wanted uh, to keep this at not, probably not at a fixed temperature because I don't see anything in terms of uh, like a uh, heating element in there. It's not temperature controlled, but uh, they, they do want to um, thermally isolate it so they don't want any drafts drifting across here and then upsetting components because we've probably got, you know, match transistors in here like this. And, uh, they, you know, these two match, they look like, wow, they look like precision resistors. We'll have a closer look at this. This is fascinating. Don't you hate it when you've got woolen hair stuck on your capacitors? <laughs> so, yeah, they obviously don't want any drafts coming across. Even though this thing doesn't have a fan at all, um, you don't want any, you know, uh, convection inside the case. Just, you know, any temperature gradients across your components. So, there you go. There's all the magic. Can you guess what it is yet? Should I tell you? Should I show you the front panel label? Mmm. Mmm. Looks like it's conformally coated. You can see the shine on that compared to the PCB. Probably to stop moisture on the PCB. So whatever this is, it is a, well, high precision for the time. Um, high precision something or other. All right, I'll put you out of your misery. Ta-da! Hewlett Packard 18652A analog to digital converter. Yes, none of this single chip or built into your microcontroller ADC rubbish. No sorry, Bob. This is obviously some sort of, uh, uh, you know, precision analog to digital converter for some, like, because I can't find any information on this, it leads me to believe that it's probably some, like, industry-specific th thing, maybe the, you know, the medical or research industry or something like that, you know, uh, physics or stuff, things like that, physics data sampling or some other 
such thing that uh, it's not like designed for one customer because there's a lot of these around. You can actually still buy these secondhand on eBay. So they must have had a lot of use, but I can't find any information on the HP 18652A um, at all. So maybe my Google food just sucks today, but anyway, this is an ADC, I don't, so I don't even have any specs. What is it? Maybe it was a like a 16-bit ADC for the day or something like that at, uh, you know, four samples per second. Maybe it was higher than that, 18, 20. Could have been 24 bits at the time. Who knows? But uh, they certainly went to a lot of effort to do this. Oh, have they rubbed the numbers off? Oh, no. No, I thought they'd rub the numbers off. There you go. Do we have part numbers on those? Wow, I haven't seen one of those tranny packages in a long time. It looks like your standard uh, transistor, which you'd get here, of course, your standard uh, TO92 package there, but then it's just got the round base on it. <laughs> Old school. Wow. And check these out. These are fascinating. These are precision resistors. Circuit trim. IRC circuit trim 10K resistors, but you can see that they're only plus minus 5% there. They're, you know, low tolerance resistors, or 10K and 5K, plus minus 5%, but they would have a ridiculously high tempco, those things, so they'd be really schmick resistors, probably pl paid a fortune for them, maybe they were, were they laser trim back in the day, or they, you know, trim by nude virgins with grey beards, I don't know, but yeah, precision resistors, awesome. And there's nothing on the bottom, but it looks like they do have that uh, conformal coating on there as well, just to stop the spread of moisture across the PCB, so to stop any uh, creepage across uh, the board. Once again, they've got that uh, foam insulation there, um, just to stop any uh, temperature gradients across the PCB. Nice. So you'd think this is like maybe a multi-channel uh, ADC, but no, we've got ground on the uh, bottom there, and just the single input on the top. That's all she wrote. So it's a single input ADC, obviously high resolution, high precision. It's got uh, one volt um, input range and the readings per second, um, you know, you can choose from half a reading per second up to 32. I presume that would uh, maybe trade off the uh, bandwidth and or the number of bits as well. Maybe you can, you know, higher sample rate. Um, you get a greater effective number of bits. So I don't know what topology they'd be using, some sort of, like, you know, is it a single or dual slope integrator or uh, something like that perhaps, but yeah, it's a custom ADC, one channel ADC in a 19 inch rack for some ridiculously specific market. And they, you know, probably cost thousands of dollars back in the 70s for one of these analog to digital converters. If anyone knows uh, the price of this, the specs of this, anyone's got a schematic or anything like that, um, you know, please let us know. Even like a, a manual um, and like or a, some sort of data sheet for it, please let us know because it's fascinating. A 19 inch rack ADC. Did anyone guess it? If you did, you win the internet. And I'm going to assume that this is our like sampling capacity here. These uh, electrolytics uh, wouldn't be, of course, but uh, you know, I've got some other Schmicko um, film ones in there that could be. So it's got to be some sort of, you know, sampling uh, ADC and then everything else is, um, you know, maybe timer counter stuff. Um, yeah, interesting. Because it's certainly not like, you know, it, it's not like analog comes in and digital comes out of that can. Um, that's not what's going on there at all. So anyway, this is the uh, power supply side of it, obviously. So this is, uh, these are your main filter caps here. Then we've got some, uh, maybe some series pass trannies here. Uh, maybe some uh, lower, uh, like some secondary regulation there because there's precision ADC like this one. It's got to have uh, nice regulated supplies. So these are all probably uh, local regulation for it. And then uh, you're some sort of slopey ADC integrator and then all the rest of the stuff to uh, convert it to digital. And then this, you know, it probably shifts it out well, is it parallel out or is it... Uh, no, it's serial out because on the back it's just got output and input. So you can cascade them together probably and it, it probably shoves all the data into one big uh, serial stream or something. 
Now it's measured some voltages here, I've powered it on and we get the red status light and the relay up there goes clunk, clunk. So something's happening. So let's measure there's plus minus 15 volts in here. Whoa, 22. Uh, 22. So, um, <laughs> doesn't sound good. Let's measure the 5 volt rail. 5 volt rail's good. So all the digital stuff's going to be doing its digital magic. Maybe they've mislabeled on the uh, PCB in there at plus minus 15 and plus minus 22 is the go. Either that or the two regulators uh, could be shot. I don't know if we've got positive, negative regulators in there. They could be Gonski. And that's our 5 volt rail there. That looks reasonably good. Uh, that's 5 millivolts uh, per division. And, whoa, what's going on there? Whoa, I thought it was good. No? Whoa, oh, just jumping around the shop. That's 50 millivolts uh, per division. And why is it banging around like that? Wow, that's a sick puppy power supply. I hate the stupid glary screen on this new Rigol 7000. Ugh. And that's our 5 volt rail. Wow, there's some stuff happening. Stuff, high, look at all that high frequency crap happening in there. Wow, that's not, it's not a happy camper, is it? Okay, so I've given that Rigol 7000 the flick. That screen's just horrible. All right, I'm going to single shot capture uh, one volt per division. I've got the serial output here, which is, you know, the output has just like, there's a, just the output. There's an input and output connector, as you saw right at the start. I'm going to press start here. See what happens. And single shot. Ta-da! Looks like we have something. It's decaying. Whoa, it's going negative. Hello. Okay, we're getting stuff here when I press it. Let's actually go into roll mode, shall we? And give it a go. Now I'm going to press the button. Boom. So it gives a single... Looks like it gives a single pulse. If I hold it down and let it go, if I hold it down, it goes negative. If I release the front panel start-stop button, it goes positive. That's interesting. If I keep pressing it, it's just... That just doesn't seem right. I expected some sort of serial data packet because the 5 volt rails working so even if the analog section was crap I'd still expect it to be doing the business so you know it's got that 8 meg clock in there I expected it to be you know outputting a stream of data so but it ain't could be well, just one sick puppy like I said if you got any info on it at all I cannot find a damn thing the specs user manual a data sheet anything on it um, at all, which is quite strange, which leads me um, to think that it was, you know, developed and, and sold by one of the, you know, specialist divisions of Hewlett Packard, like spun off once uh, Keysight focused on test and measurement and stuff like that. Back in the day, um, yeah, they had just all these different divisions. So some sort of like, you know, maybe research type analog to digital converter. I've got no idea. I just, I no idea of the specs but it's obviously uh precision they went to a lot of trouble with that uh thermally inside this thing to match you know make sure there's no thermal gradients across those components which can upset uh the apple card in terms of you know the balance of your the symmetry of your circuit in there when you got matched uh that's why you often use uh, matched transistor pairs in the same package on the same die because they're at the same temperature that's why often you'll get two transistors um back in the day Still rarely, but you see it occasionally these days. Two transistors back to back and then they'll bond them together with a piece of metal to keep them uh, thermally matched. So, yeah, they've gone to a lot of trouble to uh, do that and it's some sort of mystery analog to digital converter. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. If you did, give the video a big thumbs up. As always, you can support me over on Patreon and I rarely mention this, but you can also uh, support the blog in various ways, uh, often at uh, no cost to yourself. I'll link it in down below as well. So if you buy stuff on Amazon or AliExpress, I've got a new AliExpress affiliate uh, link and stuff like that. If you want to buy anything through that, I get a commission on that. doesn't cost you anything. Um, I support uh, cryptocurrency donations and PayPal donations and Patreon donations and stuff like that. So thank you very much to all those who support me. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.